What's up, homies? It is the Joystick Show, episode 80. Oh, Dylan. shit. Holy shit. The 8 We're fucking old, dude. We're getting, we're, we're we're old getting pretty rickety old, we've Dylan. Been, we've been on social security for 15 years. Welcome we got money. Welcome to the Joystick Show. Oh, no. Yes. Whole... Would you like a butterscotch oh, while no. you're at it? Oh, no. No? They're like, why do old ladies sound like that? Yeah, like right. they all they all sound they the all same. Sound the exact and you think it, they sound different. Of all don't. races. No, it doesn't matter. <laughs> they all sound like this. Like do you throw in you throw in like <laughs> So there was this Chinese old lady, right? She was like, Hello, how are you? <laughs> I bet though, honestly. Welcome to the joystick show. Yeah. Uh quality stuff. Not in, it's not hosted by old ladies, no. hosted by me. We should, Bobby. We, could, we could do that. Get old ladies yeah. to come in or Yeah, an old lady Dylan. Hello. Old lady Dylan. Got the yeah. hair. Of an old lady. And uh, we're I here feel. to entertain and educate you guys for, uh, you know, 40 to 60 minutes. Yeah. That's kind of how the shindig goes. Yeah. Uh, Usually. F- uh, I don't. I, <laughs> man, first of all, I'm going to be straight up honest here. Yeah. We did like three intros of this show before this started. I just don't know why I can't fucking bring no, myself yeah, to speak. It's very, very interesting. It's like I did 79 episodes of this show, and for some Solid reason, 80, intros, 80, I would say throughout. 80 comes along, and I, I don't know yeah. what I'm doing. Yeah, it's wild. Usually, yeah. we start with like some YouTube stuff, right? Which is where I'm yeah. going to so right you, now. Yeah, so Great usually, segue, by the yeah, way. Usually, we say that you make sure to subscribe if you haven't. Even though mostly everyone is like, Hit that I feel button. like we have like the best subscriber to viewer ratio we weirdly do yeah. we, it's like it's like it's solid you guys are sick. like all of the viewers yeah. do subscribe yeah. so you know you know you guys do well time. but if you haven't if you watch this you click this link or whatever fucking hit that bell too for right? sure yeah stay up to date no. and uh we're gonna leave you with a question oh that shit. question is who's your favorite superhero oh fuck make sure to comment that doesn't matter from what publisher detective comics or marvel yeah. just yeah, captain comments. on the pants all the way Hey, that's a fair yeah, answer. It's and that's, pretty that's, that's respectable. Yeah. Did you hear about... I think those books are, like, banned. What? Did you hear about that? No, because it's, like, underwear? No. He's and naked? it, like, goes way further than oh, that, Oh, okay. Can, so. can we get into that first, Yeah, actually? yeah, yeah. I'm interested. I'm now yeah, super... Yeah, I recently looked this up. Captain Underpants is, like, on a list of books that are, like, banned from schools now. Oh, shit. Yeah. Let, let's, let's... How I, about... How is Super Diaper Baby? That's who I assume. The fuck is Super Diaper Baby? It was the spinoff of Captain Underpants. Really? Yes. Interesting. Can you no, can, like? Can we look up Super Diaper Baby as well? We we can after we look up the controversy between behind Captain Underpants. Oh shit. Uh, controversy. See book bans. There you go. Let me get this thing out of my face. According to the American Library Association, the Captain Underpants books were reported as some of the most Banned and challenged books in the United States between 2000 and 2009. Where's like the list though? Oh, there we go. Oh. Uh, the Captain Underpants series was explicitly banned in some schools for insensitivity, offensive language, encouraging disruptive behavior, LGBTQIA plus Bam. issues, violence, being unsuited to the age group, sexually explicit content, anti-family content, content, as well as encouraging children to disobey authority. Okay, so first first off, all of these things describe me or this show. <laughs> like, right off the bat. Like, just explicit, sexually explicit content, disobeying authority. That's, that's, <laughs> that's, that's, that's me all along. Yeah. So, like, I encourage that. I, I, I make sense, though. And uh, and and for Dylan's sake, I looked up Diaper Baby book. Yeah, The Adventures uh, of Super Diaper Baby. Is this is, is this <laughs> night Dad went to jail. <laughs> what? <laughs> oh my God! What? <laughs> <laughs> this came out. This is a joke. Why is it a rabbit? No, oh my God! It's a rabbit. It has amazing ratings too. Holy. I mean, hey, that's a really fucking niche book. <laughs> Wow. Oh, no. Interesting. Which, can is there, like, I, I assume there's different excerpts for different crimes, you know? <laughs> like, 
<laughs> people in this instance. Daddy robbed a liquor store. <laughs> it's like, Daddy had <laughs> second degree fucking manslaughter. <laughs> he drove his car into another one <laughs> in the opposite lane. But like, for, for kids. For kids. For kids. <laughs> they draw it all nice and special. Oh, oh shit. I'm so right. glad we started with that and not with what yeah. Super Diaper Baby. Yeah, and not what we've been doing. The nice daddy the, went to jail. This is way interest, way more interesting than what I'm, I'm assuming I've been doing, but also what both of us have been mm-hmm. doing. Yeah. No, it's it's true. Yeah. It's, it's for sure. <laughs> for sure. You're not wrong. I kind of want to like read into that more. What? Like the, the Captain Underpants thing. Oh, yeah. Like right. other books that are banned. Like surpri- I feel like there's a lot that are banned for like weird reasons, mm-hmm. you know? It's always like disobey authority. Like that's why Catcher in the Rye was like banned. I never read it. Yeah, I'm gonna be honest. It was bad. It was bad. It's bad. It's a it's a horrible read. I gave it. A, I gave it a try. I read like I read like a solid 25 yeah. pages. Well, it's also I was like <laughs> nope. Well, also books like that are weird because it's like a guy in his 40s pretending to be like a teenager, mm-hmm. but this guy was just a really weird fucking teenager, and he's just like I hung out with a prostitute, but I didn't pay her. No, this is real. Do you know like yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Basically, part of Catcher in the Rye is he pays a prostitute. But then he gets mad at the prostitute for not wanting to have a conversation with him. Uh-huh. And she's like, I don't understand why people don't want to talk. And she's like, look, I got to fucking go. Like, I'm a prostitute, you know? And that's like the whole book. Yeah. This yeah, is yeah. him going to different places, like trying to be like going to the cab driver and be like, hey, cab driver. What's up with birds? <laughs> And the cab driver's like, I don't know, kid. I don't know anything about all, no birds. All I'm getting from this is I'm so happy I didn't read this book. Honestly, <laughs> that for 200 speaking. pages, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, man, this brings me... Oh, can I talk about a book that... Yeah. So, it's just such a fever dream of a book that I remember I was thinking about it recently, and I was like, did I read that book? And I was like, Oh, I there's did. a tons of books I like did that. read yeah. that book. Um, we had a teacher at Malloy that okay. I won't name their name. I did not like them that much at all. Okay. But uh, they they it was an English teacher and they made me read a book or not me but like our yeah. class read a book and it was something something of the bone. I think it was like Rule of the Bone. Okay, I I think I know. I didn't read this book, but yeah. I know of this book. Also, um, for like clarity's sake, like not every English teacher gave the same books. Yeah. Like every English teacher was like, you had like, different you had like, tw- uh, you had a section of probably like 30 and I feel like they just chose like, there cause there was some overlap, nine. you know? Yeah. 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 Like you, you, there were definitely like one or two books that you would read alongside other classes. But for the most part, the majority of the books were like the syllabus made by that English teacher. Yeah. So long story short, read this book called like rule of the bone. Mm-hmm. And again, this is just going off what the fuck I remember from this fever dream of a book. But it starts off with this kid whose name is like Bone and he's like a punk teen that lives in a trailer park and his like stepfather is abusive or whatever. So he decides to like run away from home and then he starts to live out of a school bus with a Rastafarian man (laughs) who deals weed. Oh, the best. And he becomes like a stoner. And then at one point in the book, he goes to a mall where a guy offers to like take right. pictures. I feel of like him. I feel like this is worse than Captain Underpants. Yeah, right. This is a lot <laughs> it's more, a lot worse. It's, a, it's a lot more provocative. I mean, you know, I was in high school at the time. Yeah. But uh, and then at one point, fucking, he goes to a mall and some guy tells him he wants to take pictures of him for like a modeling agency. But then he ends up being a pedophile, so he like escapes that oh guy. Oh my god! And I think yeah. he helps like another girl escape him or something oh, like that. Nice. Yeah. Long story short, the movie ends the book. with like. The book. I'm sorry. Yeah, the, it feels like a fucking movie. No, well, no. Well, like, ends, when you read a book like that, it's just, you the way, even the way you visualize it is like different from someone yeah. else. So it's like sometimes you'll have like a really like skewed view of it. So then, like the Rastafarian man, he wants to go back to Jamaica to like live on the island or whatever. So they like they save up all their money and they finally get enough money for the two of them, like this teenage kid and the Rastafarian guy, to go live in Jamaica from like their money that okay. they make. And then when they get to Jamaica, Bone finds out that his biological father lives there and he's basically like a drug kingpin or something Holy like that. Holy shit. It's a whole fucking thing. And I remember that's I finally fire. got to the end and I was like, this is too much. That's this that's a much. good twist though. That's basically a twist. It's too much, man. It's like, yo, you you went all the way here, now your dad's here. Yeah, right. <laughs> that's fucking wild, it's dude. Like, this holy- is giving off have you ever seen the YouTuber uh, Jenny Nicholson? Mm Uh she does like she basically does what we just did. Like, like she, explain yeah, books. Yeah, but like she'll go to like uh, like Amazon with the ones that will have like one out of five, oh, and she'll yeah. read the whole fucking book. Damn. And she'll just be like, "All right, guys." So <laughs> that's amazing. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's and, helpful. And I found her because she did. Uh, Defunct Land had her on his podcast, mm-hmm. 
and he was talking to her about how like she got like a million subscribers in like less than a year or some shit like that wow just because just from doing like you know no that that's yeah. fucking entertaining honestly speaking yeah. that's dope i would do that with like shitty movies i mean there's a lot of people who do there's a lot of, I mean, exactly there's overlap but everyone loves a shitty movie for sure everybody that's loves a, to that, shit that's, on a shitty movie yeah. that's the best like part. Right, for like i want to say at least a year like red letter media like their stuff especially like, best of the worst was like the best show because yeah. it's like a podcast about bad movies yeah. it's like gets in there what you been up to, friendo? Yeah, so I uh, absolutely nothing. Mainly like school Sick. shit. Yeah, awesome. Nothing. I mean, it's gonna be the chapter title. Yeah. Well, that was that's what I used to do, right? I'd be like, oh, I haven't been up to anything. Yeah. And then I go on to, but I'll uh, I'll do a little bit of a switch up. So I've been working on a lot of like school stuff. Yeah. Um, and I gotta make an argument. I have to do a mock debate in front of my class. Mm-hmm. And I basically just wrangled my class together and made it work. Cause like people, no one showed up for anything, uh-huh. and it was just like not. Was it a time. group thing? Yeah, 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 oh, yeah, boy. Yeah. yeah. And it's like usually every group is usually four on each side, mm-hmm. but ours is three versus three, and like one on each side never come to class. Wow. Uh, but we have a group chat. We figured it out. Uh, and the professor's like super easygoing. But I realized law- being a lawyer must be fucking hard. That it sounds annoying. Yeah, because because basically, do you know about the Ford Pinto? what the fuck okay so there was a car there was a car in the 70s called the ford pinto okay the engine was not in the front Uh, uh it was in the back okay subcompact cars at the time did that Uh to like save space or whatever make it smaller uh that's not good for when you get rear-ended yeah uh gas leaks it'll just fucking explode etc people died from that i have to say that it wasn't the car company's fault that that happened. Oh, okay, got it. Which, by the way, it fucking was. Those motherfuckers. Yeah, it was. And you look up anything with the car industry, it's like they had the patent to save this many people's lives. And they were like, nah, nah. let's not do we'll it. We'll wait on that for a bit. We'll wait. We'll make sure. We'll make, have to make sure the government has to force us at gunpoint to do it. <laughs> and then we'll do it. But, um, you know, I feel like a, I feel like a scumbag to be like, yeah, you know, even though it's like not real, like no one gives a fuck. Like everyone just wants to do they the bought bear. the car. You yeah. Know, like- yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. They didn't care about it, you know, which is true. A bunch of fucking teenagers bought the car. Yeah. They didn't know. Uh, but yeah, like it's just super interesting. And I, um, have I told you about a man by the name of Alan Dershowitz? No, I would okay. have remembered if I, if yeah. I knew about it. So a he's a Alan lawyer Dershowitz. and basically his claim to fame. I'm going on like a huge tangent. No, here. this is cool. Yeah. We've never talked about law yeah. before. But uh, Alan Dershowitz is a lawyer that infamously uh, defends people who like are under suspicious circumstances. Okay. So like he defended OJ Simpson. Mm-hmm. He was like part of his like legal team. counsel. He yeah. was legal counsel. He serves legal counsel for anyone that gets involved with pedophilia or murdering their wives. All right. Also at the same time, the unrelated, his wife went mysteriously, <laughs> like she mysteriously killed herself. Of course she did. With no prior history yeah, of like yeah. suicidal stuff. Uh huh. But you know, not Besides expected. that, you know. Besides that, this guy uh, is like littered with stuff, and he came. His claim to fame recently was that he defended Donald Trump in Ooh. during the uh, insurrection stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Basically, he was getting impeached. Blah blah blah. Oh, before okay, that, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. And he basically served as like, this is why you shouldn't impeach him, etc. Uh, he his defense team. Do you know what his like main one though was? No, Jeffrey Epstein. I was going to guess, because when yes. you said that first, that was yeah, the yeah, first yeah, thing yeah, that yeah, came yeah. to my mind, so, so I was he, expecting you to start with that, this but it ma- makes sense. This man negotiated the famous plea deal with Jeffrey Ep- Epstein, where essentially, uh, instead of getting like 10 plus years, Epstein got a year in like, a, in like you know, in, in jail, mm-hmm. essentially. Uh, and part of the plea deal negotiated was that uh, Jeffrey Epstein at a later date cannot be tried at a state or federal court weird uh for these women okay Uh, yeah and anyone who was on any of the planes or any witnesses cannot be tried also meaning that everyone involved basically got free protection against the law and that's why no like bill clinton and all these people they're not getting charged with anything yeah just because of that That's they at least ridiculous. two of them at least two fa- other famous people would have been charged in the case if they were allowed to do that wow. later on when jeffrey epstein killed himself that was a uh, part of uh like by that point they got him on, on another woman and another thing mm-hmm. he was on other charges he wasn't on that individual case yeah 
but I just find that why, that like a lawyer can just feel like good about themselves. Yeah, right. To after doing that, I mean, I'm sure he has like he's guilty and he's been on the plane like 24 times mm-hmm. by the way. So crazy. Not looking good for him. Yeah, but... yeah, not looking good for him at all. Uh huh. Honestly, and to end this on a good note, Donald Trump has known Alan Dershowitz and Jeffrey Epstein for 30 plus years. And when Trump got elected in 2016, he elected the other side of the plea deal yeah. that Dershowitz negotiated. He appointed that guy to his presidential cabinet. What? There's like everyone is connected. Can, it's, yeah. Yeah. It's very strange. What the fuck? Yeah. <laughs> that was the most grown up thing you've ever talked about. Yeah. On this show. So besides that tangent, uh, I've realized that with the school stuff, I'm focusing on like a head. Yeah. And I feel like now it's like I shouldn't focus on like what I've been doing. It's what I'm going to be doing, right? Okay. So you I'm, could have started with that. Yeah, I should have instead of going on a tangent about oh, what I did. Fucking crazy. It was tangent. good, though. It was good. Yeah. Just didn't know where it was going. <laughs> but uh, yeah, like uh, I'm going to a concert tomorrow. I have like four concerts this month, I think, three, at least three. Mm-hmm. So that's going to be exciting. I'm currently uh, planning vacations. Mm. Very exciting. I have spring break coming up. That's cool. Going to go to some mountain place. Looks like we're filming an episode early that week. Well, it's like I, it's Easter too, so like yeah, yeah. We, we're gonna we're probably gonna do it early anyway. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, you know, I uh, realized that there's a lot of good vacation spots I want to go to. Fire. Given that I didn't go on vacation really for like mm-hmm. you know quarantine and stuff like that. I didn't, yeah, I didn't either. I went, I went to po- Florida we and went, Puerto Rico, and then Puerto Rico we went to, but. Besides that, like I didn't really do anything, yeah. and it's like there's a lot of like even drivable stuff yeah. that you could do. I want to go to Canada. Yeah. Oh fuck yeah! And now there's a uh, speaking of concerts, there's a new music festival in Canada, and it's actually it's too it's a little too spread out for me to like actually want to go to it. Uh-huh. But it's like a hundred Gex, Samfa, uh, Royal Blood, mm-hmm. like it's a lot of good bands I mean, on you, this you show. Me ASAP, with that one. A- ASAP Rocky, you know, like Fire. it's there's good it's a good set, but it's like you know montreal area that's dope so i'm like mm, tempting right very tempting to go to canada what have you been up to nothing no i mean i was gonna say nothing in the level of like debate or law or anything like oh that. no i mean i don't i did not i mean i don't look at you and i'm kind of pissed law. at dylan right now because we started this podcast with a plan and dylan was like i'll end it with the gaming thing that i was doing and now i feel like my shit is just oh gonna be like- Okay, so I have I have big okay 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 yeah yeah true true I forgot I forgot about that entirely. I did tell Bobby I That's was going. I'm like, I did this tell shit Bobby has I nothing gonna, to do with what he. I just did tell Bobby I was going to end on a gaming thing. I have some big news, and that I finally have platinumed Handball 17 <laughs> for the PS4. Um, I didn't play it because it's not that it's not fun enough. Yeah. To do five seasons in. Uh huh. Uh, but I, I, you know, it got fun towards the end yeah. and, and, uh, I only played half the game cause once I got in the lead, I would just let the time run out. Proud of you, buddy. Uh, so I, yeah, I, I got the plot. I got, uh, I got max stats and everything. You finally platinum the handball uh, game that came out five years ago. And I bought it like a few months ago. <laughs> How long have you been playing? Oh. Yeah, months. yeah. Well, basically what happened was I got all of the trophies except for the grindy ones. Yeah. That's what I usually And do. then I was like, I'm going to wait until this game isn't horrible. Or at least it's like bearable. Mm-hmm. So like, I haven't really had much to play except for like Rocket League and like NHL. I've also been playing 2K. Mm-hmm. I'm a beast at 2K. Uh oh. Don't even try to don't play not. me in 2K. I still now. have it downloaded, bro. Oh my, bro. I'm like, I like, bro. I run, I run floppies for days. <laughs> even even the two three sets, you know. But uh, what was I say? Yeah. So fucking handball. Um. When handball 18 goes on sale. <laughs> I might think about it, but it's not. I mean, it's. Is but, there like a handball nineteen? Handball I think so. T- oh my god! I think me at one point, I think the developer ran out of money, but I think they often like reuse assets. Yeah, yeah. Like the same thing. You just like update the rosters of and the, the graphics g- a little bit. Yeah, the graphics a little bit. Oh, this this uh you know this German dude is now playing for a different team. Got you it. know. Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> cool. Cool. Sounds dope. So apparently, I guess you wanted me to talk about a gaming thing because you also had a gaming thing yeah. that you wanted to talk about. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. What is that? So real quick, everything that you've said was really like interesting, hundred yeah. percent. But 
I find it fucking crazy. We're already 20 minutes into the podcast, and I haven't really said anything at all. Of yeah, I, I took the reins on that one. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, I guess I could just talk about how I played video games for the past week. Nice. No, I was on break. It was pretty chill. Oh, yeah. Uh, I, I completely forget about uh-huh. that. I mean, the thing is, is I usually only go into work for like two days or three days out of the week anyway, but it was still cool to just like have a week where I could just chill and do me and just do whatever I wanted, you know? Nice. But part of that was, like, I got bored of playing, like, Apex and, like, Overwatch and whatever games I was playing yeah. now. So I was like, damn, I kind of want to, like, go back and play some old games that I enjoyed. Handball 14. Yeah, exactly. So I went back and I decided to play a little fucking gem called Guacamelee. Oh, shit. The game's so much fun, man. I, I The first one I liked. Yeah. That was another game where I had to wait on the Platinum. Yeah. Because it's a good game, but I know you probably just played it back to back, right? Yeah. When I, I couldn't do that. I mean, they're really they're not easy platinums, but they're not crazy. They're like, good. They're yeah. I mean, they're just solid games overall. For sure, man. And they're like two is such a great sequel from one. I played both of them in like two or three days. Ooh, man. I th- they're just like so. So the reason I'm like I wanted to play them is I found out that I I don't know if it came out already, but I think that they're making, or like this month it comes out Axiom Verge two. Interesting. Yeah, and that's With, a it's a Metroidvania yes. type platformer essentially. And then in when I saw that, I was like, fuck, I want to go back and play like some old Other Metroidvania ones. games. So I went back and I was thinking about downloading Axiom Verge. And that's when I went and I was like, oh, shit. Oh, yeah. For people who it. don't know, a Metroidvania game is based off of two former games that are old. Yep, Metroid and Castlevania. And, Castlevania. and essentially that comes from, I know part of it at least, is that you unlock stuff as you go along. Yeah. Like it's an open world. The game takes place in like an open world, but as you traverse through it, you'll run into areas and obstacles that you won't be able to progress through yet because you have to find a gadget, a weapon, a key, an ability anything. that yeah. lets you get to the next thing. So it's cool because you like play the game and you find things and you're like, oh, I got to find fucking something to get yeah. up there. And there's it's different good. areas and then you come back and it's satisfying. Exactly. And, yeah. and games like that are really cool because they're usually uh, well-routed too because they have they have to be for you not to get lost. Like yeah. you, They have to have things put in specific places so once you get an ability, you're like, oh, okay, I could use that right there and that gets me further into the level. So... Regardless, sorry to go on a tangent about no, how that is, I, mean, I, I, had, I had to. I, but know, I, I know there's a few people that would be like, what the fuck? No, but I mean? like that Dylan did that because the, one of the reasons why I love Guacamelee in comparison to like Axiom Verge and other ones like that is because it takes the genre and just makes it super unique. Like it yeah. themes it around luchadors and like the Mexican like, you know, culture and all and that stuff. And it also stuff. just does it really well where mm-hmm. it's like by the end of the game you end up with like a crazy amount of powers yep. and you're like you could do literally anything yep. and it's like one of the few beat em ups where i'm like i don't mind my big problem with beat em up games is that they get boring they after get boring, a bit yeah. and you're just kind of mashing square but guacamole fills in like platforming elements yeah. even puzzle elements in the middle of combat mm-hmm. so the and fact- it's all just it's seamless honestly yeah you have yeah. to like keep in mind what moves hit certain characters or like there's this whole thing where you can swap dimensions from like the living world and the the world of the dead. Yeah, and like, you can only attack some enemies in certain ones. So you have to like juggle that. It's mad fun, but I just kind of sat down and and I, I slaved away at that for like. This is reminding me. I have to. I never platinum the Guacamelee dos. Two. I never. Oh, dude, yeah. it's so much more. I fun. know it's good, but it I, has a whole like skill tree system. It's so dope. I gotta. I gotta play. Yeah. It, what I, I was telling Jerry about it, like with in one of the ways it improved it is you remember how like the first game has like grabs where you can mm-hmm. grab people and slam them to the ground you have to buy those in this game because they're stupidly overpowered oh the uh, yeah. they i mean they are they yeah. i just grab everybody in yeah the i'm just game. slam them that area of effect damage mm-hmm. so yeah go play guacamelee super Definitely. fun they're probably mad cheap now because they're very old at this i bought point. guacamelee 2 on sale for like it was like four or three bucks and four i bucks really buy. really want uh that studio drink box studios to make guacamelee 3 because man just, just, now I'm just itching to play a new one now. <laughs> but yeah, that's pretty much just been me. Um, yeah. Can I continue talking? Since yeah. You, I mean, I can spin this into another thing that I did, okay. which was what we've been waiting to talk about for a bit. Dun, dun, uh, dun. As you can see by my shirt. And as you can probably tell from previous episodes of The Joystick Show, I like comic books. I like movies. A superhero. I like superheroes. I'm I like a, fan man, of all of a man things. in spandex who saves lives you know it you know it at some point uh it was my mom's birthday hey yo and it was also the joystick's birthday which is pretty cool but to celebrate my mom's Seamless. birthday i took my mom and my dad out to go see the batman 
We went to go see it the day before it comes out. Shout out to Cinemart for doing the day before releases. The best, yeah. Amazing. It's great. Uh, holy fucking shit. Movie is incredible. Mm. Honestly speaking. So I was very not skeptical because I have that bias. First of all, like I said, I love superhero movies. And yeah. then besides that, I'm such a stupidly large fan of Batman that even going Batman's into it, cool. I knew that I was going to enjoy it to some degree. But you always kind of go in with like, you know, fuck, what if they get this wrong? Oh, I mean, especially when it's like a DC character. Especially when it's Batman. like It's like the one guy you exactly. have that's like solid. Yeah, for sure. It's nerve wracking. But uh, man, I think they just made such great decisions with this movie. So no worries. This is going to be spoiler free because the movie is still very, very fresh. And it's still very, it's going to be talked about for a while. And I don't want to spoil it for my man Dylan here. But hopefully this motivates me to go see it. Yeah. Honestly speaking, I think I'd rather start with the things I didn't like about the movie because very small, to be honest, there's mm-hmm. like nothing at all. Uh, movie's very long. Clock's in at two hours, 59 minutes. So it's practically three hours long. Fuck. Uh, but to be honest with you, it, the pacing is very well. It, I mean, it's very good. There's enough elements in the story to keep you going. Mm-hmm. Even if it's not an action sequence, there's something impactful happening. The story is really well written. So mm-hmm. even though it's long, it doesn't feel long. Like you, you feel like you're along for the ride. The one criticism I did kind of give it, though, was uh, without spoiling too much, kind of like one of the big antagonists of the movie gets like caught, but it's not necessarily at the end of the movie. So at that point, it makes it feel like it's the end of the movie. And then the rest of the movie, even though there's still like rising action and stuff like that, it just feels like, I don't want to say redundant because it's still great and it's still necessary, but it just, it feels off a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it's like you already, you already felt. The, yeah, yeah. Like you thought it was yeah. over and you really do feel like it's over. And then it, the, the movie's like, nope, we're going to take you around for another half hour on this ride. Interesting. Yeah. Very interesting. But the thing I mentioned was like. It gives me movie, like no country for old men vibes. Kinda, it's yeah. like, hey, movie's over. No, it's not. Nope, nope, nope. nope, nope. Old guy got to eat some cereal. Exactly. <laughs> but, but now that, uh, what you gonna call it? But I was, I was saying in the chat, I was like, if, if the movie's going to have a pacing issue like that and have it. The movie have oh my god i can't fucking talk i was gonna say if the movie's gonna have a pacing issue like that and the movie's mm. gonna be three hours long i'm glad that it happens at the very end so they oh, can yeah. still enjoy like the movie that was really my only criticism to tell the truth mm. robert pattinson's batman is surprisingly very entertaining very moody very emo batman oh well, you need it um but you, i gotta he's gotta be i gotta say man just the rest of the cast just shines mm. so bright uh, first of all, uh, Zoe Kravitz, great Catwoman, holy fucking shit, she's amazing, solid. Their chemistry, dope. Yeah, good. Yeah, nice. Uh, Colin Farrell's Penguin is like laughably good. Like I can't believe it. Oh, like shit. you watch it and you're like, I'm reading a comic book, but yeah, it's yeah, yeah, yeah. on the screen right now. It's fucking insane. That's good. Colin, shout to Colin Farrell coming in the clutch. Oh, I got one big fucking pro for you. You ready yeah. for this? John Turturro. Had no fucking idea he was in the Batman. What? And he plays a major role, too. He plays Carmine Falcone, who's like a major mob boss in the Batman storylines. Yeah. Had no fucking idea. That's who you got to get, too, to play a mobster. First of all, <laughs> John Turturro is a great fucking actor. Holy shit. Yeah. You can give him a comedic script, a dramatic script. doesn't matter. My man is can we pull? Deliver. Can we pull up a filmography? Filmography? Yeah. The cool thing with John, though, is that he does a lot of independent film. So a lot of his filmography is like independent yeah film. of course but i mean I, I like that and like coen brothers movies oh okay yeah well for sure uh but yeah i thought he was incredible in the movie i, I, I john was, turtle john turtle <laughs> <laughs> i know it's Tuttle, but it was very refreshing to see him too uh yeah filmography nice there you go. Yeah, Raging Bull, Man at Table, the best, the best of it. Yeah, John Turturro has one of the larger filmographies. <laughs> yeah, honestly, a lot of movies. They're sure. This is we're up to ninety seven. Ninety four. Yeah. Holy shit, Big Lebowski. Yeah. Jeez, man. We we just got to the two thousands and it's still going. Oh my god, I totally forgot. He's, he's in uh, Mr. He's in Deeds. Mr. Deeds. He's the guy. He's the the <laughs> butler. The Transformers movies. That's where a lot of people know him from. From our... Zohan. <laughs> we talk. He's the the main villain. Oh yeah, the Phantom. Bro, that's like my. That's low key my favorite John Turturro. Yeah, is it? Bro, I love him in that movie, oh, man. Oh god, that's one of those bad movies that I love so fucking. It's funny. Much. I mean, I don't know. Adam Sandler's funny, man. I could get into that later too. Some more bad movies that I love because I watched one yesterday. 
oh, I heard about this new Pinocchio movie. And look, the Batman. That's Carmine Falcone. Yeah, man. Dude does movies, and he was great in that movie. Nice. Fantastic. Just, like, very scary, but also very, like... I don't know how to explain how a mob boss should be like terrifying, but in a weird way, kind of like reassuring and comforting. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. One person uh, you want to have a conversation. And the last thing I thought was fantastic was the fucking cinematography. Holy shit! Yummy. I don't think I've ever seen a superhero movie that looked that beautiful. Mm-hmm. Where like every single frame, every single scene was just like you could perfectly crafted. You could tell they painstakingly worked on the composition and the mm-hmm. lighting and the color. It was just wow. Nice. I was thinking about it last night, whether or not it has like Oscar potential. And I genuinely think that the Batman has serious potential for like cinematography, art design, maybe even score. Oh, I'm sure it will get like art and costume without yeah. a doubt. Like I don't that, think usually... best picture is a stretch. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. I think it deserves a, a best director nom, yeah. nom for uh, uh, Matt Reeves. He's yeah. incredible. Honestly, though, thank God for Black Panther for existing. Yeah, it gave. I kind of like. I knew Marvel like still had like I had credibility because mm-hmm. of course it's how it's the blockbuster, especially yeah. for that you know for a window you know especially even now. But I think it's cool that since Black Panther won awards, now like you could actually see superhero movies winning stuff. Yeah, like like big awards, not just. Well, I mean, like going the, back even further, I think one of the f- first ones was Dark Knight. Yeah, yeah, when yeah, Heath yeah. Ledger won mm-hmm. like supporting actor and all. Oh that. yeah, because it's like you know Nolan was already in the pocket, mm-hmm. so they knew. But uh, but no, for sure, because I mean, honestly speaking, there's like that whole debate that I think Jimmy Kimmel brought it up a few weeks ago, or, like a month ago, where he was saying like he doesn't understand how a movie like Don't Look Up could get nominated for Best Picture, uh, but a movie like Spider-Man No Way Home couldn't get nominated when it had way better reviews both crit- from oh, critics yeah, and yeah, from yeah. the audience. And he's basically saying, like, is when did the Best Picture nomination become about serious movies and stuff like that? Yeah, why can't it, like, like, you know... And I think that's true. Like, to some degree, I think that, like, a movie should be based on its impact as a movie because that's what is most important. It's how well it tells a story visually yeah for sure and that's just that like i feel like that's literally how it should be judged and that's that it's mm-hmm. not about if it's an adapted screenplay if it's a biopic about a real person which people tend to have their biases about you know those movies winning awards more than other movies and stuff like that which but, they do you know, yeah but they definitely do i think you should just look at movies as what they are and just judge the best ones of the year that did the best as that the, are looked at the it, best yeah and best <laughs> best <laughs> yeah it's very simple but yeah people overthink it i feel like that happens a lot with art stuff i feel like that's weird though because it's like the uh like the grammys for example is different Mm -hmm. like the grammys is usually like a pat on the back to whoever made the most money you know yeah Yeah, that's usually what it's like oh you made a lot you know they they, it's usually like the biggest selling artist whereas like other times with like movies it's not always like the biggest movie exactly. sometimes it's international films like, and stuff like that it's like oh this movie Parasite came yeah out, I don't know. or like parasite i know grossed a lot but there's some movies that like they didn't even gross a lot yeah they like i'm like i didn't even see that in the fucking theaters you Nomadland, know land yeah. right mm-hmm. or it's like i used to i remember my parents that's my parents say that all the time they're like i've never heard of any of these yeah, movies yeah. right and that's it's like, like the classic yeah it's like the, yeah it's weird it's you didn't see that in theaters you saw the best movie in theaters unless they did something weird like best blockbuster but then that's just uh, <laughs> if anything that's just like negating the movie best shit yeah pretty much <laughs> best it's lower like people went to watch it you know best lower quality movie it's funny. <laughs> fucking hilarious oh man but yeah definitely go watch the batman don't want to spoil anything of it but it's just it's got to be one of the best live action batman movies i've ever seen it's so faithful to gotham where like in other batman movies they just kind of pick a city and they're like it's gotham this one like looks like its own fucking city yeah like, it's I, gotham. that i feel like is very uh you know underrated like i feel like that's really important because mm-hmm. it's like that's the whole setting yeah, you know if that sure. doesn't work it's like okay well they're yeah they're it's gotta be poverty stricken it's, it's gotta be rainy and dark the, and dingy this is new york <laughs> you know? nah, it's not it's, <laughs> it believe if you could believe it or not it's worse than new york yeah 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. it has to be yeah you know you batman know? has to exist there. yeah 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 where it's like yeah it's even like in like joker where it's like it's new york but they added extra stuff fuck i do want to spoil one last thing can i spoil it would you mind do you guys mind ready <laughs> yeah spoiler warning if you don't want this to be bing 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 put like jesus christ put, that was loud for me put like a bunch of like yeah put like a bunch of lights up fucking, you got it yeah. bro fucking seizure warning 
Uh, spoiler warning, if you don't want this to be spoiled for you, go ahead and click the next chapter in the timeline below or in the description. I'm going to give you a few seconds to do that. Do, 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 do. All right, if this gets spoiled, it's on you, dipshit. All right. Uh, they fucking like the Joker is in the movie for like a couple seconds. Why? I don't know. I th- found that very interesting. That's weird. I Even feel- when the, like the cameo was happening, I was like, nah, they're not going to just introduce the Joker in the first fucking movie. So real quick, the movie takes place where like Batman's in his second year as Batman. So he's very oh. young, but he's not, it's not his first year. It's he, not, he's not an he intro. He knows a thing or two. Yes, exactly. And okay. in fact, one thing I really liked about the movie is that it's narrated most of it by Robert Pattinson. So it's cool. Cause you actually okay. get into the head of Batman. Nice. But regardless, uh, at the end of the movie, the villain Riddler gets thrown in Arkham, you know, I, that is a spoiler, but I mean it's a superhero movie. That tends that, to, that's 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 kind of how most Batman movies end. It's like the villain gets thrown in Arkham. Yeah. But there's a scene where Riddler is in Arkham and he's like crying over like you know how like sad he is. And by the way, Paul Dano played the fuck out of Riddler. Nice. Like he really went above and beyond to show that Riddler is not only a genius and like a menace when it comes to like serial killing and just like hurting people, but also like just a fucking freak yeah. of a character. Now that I'm hearing it, what a fucking solid cast. He's psychotic. Yeah, yeah. that's a good cast. But regardless, he's like he's like crying and screaming in his cell, and somebody next to him tells him like, uh, "Hey, what are you doing? Like, don't cry, be happy." And he tells him like a riddle, and then he starts laughing. And it's basically it's the Joker. There's like a quick shot that shows his like mouth, and it's a little cut up and stuff like that. Uh... And he's played by I forgot his name, but he's an Irish actor that was in Dunkirk, and he was in the Eternals too. Oh, did you see Eternals? No, I didn't see Eternals. He's this guy. Let me show you right now. I mean, he you know kind of looks the part, but. I just thought it was weird, like, I don't know. I feel like introducing Joker kind of, like, cements, like, oh, we're going to have him. But Joker's also one of those characters that you can't oversaturate because if you do it too often, it's just going to oh, fall sure, flat, yeah. right? Like, not only did we have Heath Ledger's Joker, which was incredible, but then we went from that to Jared Leto's we Joker. We just had too many, yeah, we had too many Jokers. And then we went to Joaquin Phoenix's Joker, which was incredible. Yeah. And it's like, where the hell are we going now? Yeah. It's like, can we just take a break from Joker? <laughs> Batman has so many other villains. But he's a... Uh... And then he was Suicide Squad, like, you know. Joker's in Suicide Squad, too, so. Yeah. Freaking... I unfortunately only know his name from like the Eternals cast, and I'll know it from his name, Barry Keegan. Yes, this guy. Mm-hmm. Oh, interesting. Hugh Keegan? How do you pronounce that? You're it's right. just, it's just Ke- it's just Keegan. Keegan. It's spelled differently because it comes from Gaelic. No, I figured. That's yeah, I, I legit asked you, Dylan, because you're mm-hmm. from there, you know. Yeah, that's also like uh like you know have you like have you seen like Siobhan and it's like not it doesn't yeah, look yeah, anything yeah. like. It's probably but that that's him. Yeah. Interesting. Just, just yeah. thought it was interesting, you know. Yeah, that guy, that's definitely that's fucking. TikTok fuckboy Joker, honestly. Yep. <laughs> but that's that. That's my spoiler. It's done. Now we move on to our uh, our next chapter, probably one of our last chapters of the podcast. Most likely. Yeah. Do you know what it is? No. I know what it is actually. I, I told no. you earlier I had something fun that we could we could talk about. Something um, fun. Also, I'm gonna say it here. I have several segments. I'm holding myself to it. Yes. Yeah. We are bringing those back. Yeah. Also, Joey and Jerry will be here soon. We are working on making the podcast a more, uh, not a more consistent thing. Like, we don't do this already every week. Yeah, I mean, we're, we're here every week. But we're trying to make the day that we do it more consistent. you have any preference here? I like both of them. I mean, they're both both really solid. The classic. I want the one. Not ready? No, you get yeah, uh, that one. Fuck, yes. I wanted that nice. one. Nice. <laughs> no. I pulled it, and it, like, almost separated perfectly. Almost. I was going to say... And before we look, we started this podcast, I was just looking around at the basement and how different it is with all the colors and stuff. If you could do anything to this basement, blank check, what would you put in here to make this like the sickest studio ever? Fuck. Mm-hmm. That's, a, that's a loaded question. Yeah. I don't even know. Let's talk lighting. What are you thinking? What do you put down here? You put like a gold chandelier in a basement. That would look weird. Just fucking knock your head on. No, it. you would just like make like hook the every light is hooked up to Wi-Fi, and then you got like I don't know like light bars probably or something. Oh, like oh, I like that. Yeah, like because it, it, it looks tacky when you have just like the LED strip at the top of the wall. Yeah. Looks so tacky. Yeah, when you're just on the wall. Yeah, 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 and, and it's just like and it's like uneven even too. Like the trick with like LED lighting is you have to you have to either frost it with like something to you have to diffuse it with like a frosted 
glass or some sort of just diffusion in some way or you have to bounce it off hit it hit it off a wall exactly. yeah that's why like you put it on the back of the tv exactly. and not on the wall of the tv we yeah. have a lot of people on our block who put like the led strips on their windows and my mom hated that because granted they do look tacky but i was telling her i was like if you put them on the inside of the windows it'll make the window like glow almost and i did it for her and now she's like bobby we have like the best the window display on the block and i'm like it's because you don't see the actual light it yeah. bounces off the side mm-hmm. But I like the light bar idea. That, that shit sounds cool. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like maybe in like a mismatched pattern mm-hmm. type thing. Ooh. Like two different colors. Yeah. Or just even like having hooked. Like at that point, money doesn't matter. You're buying the most expensive light that lasts mm-hmm. the longest. Some quasars. Yeah, yeah, sure. yeah, yeah. Some crazy shit. What about a table? What kind of table we get? So it has to be something like, I don't know. Interesting. Circular for sure. Round. Yeah, 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 yeah round table um we get the will smith jada pinkett table interesting the red table yeah, yeah, yeah and i think even then it needs like the 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 what is it like the leafs where it's like you extend the table so then you can extend it to make it like an oval yeah you know like you can even add more space onto it to tell you the truth i was gonna get one of those for the new podcast thing. yeah because the cool thing about that is you can have one side that's flat and the other side rounds out very true so it's like a semicircle exactly almost. Nice, like a half a pizza pie. Mm-hmm. And now, what kind of art are we hanging up up here? Oh, fucking uh, Rembrandts. Rembrandt? <laughs> no, um, uh, uh, NFTs. <laughs> we're pretty. We're that printing, was worse. We're printing out other people. <laughs> no, ew. I look so tag. I know. I hate. I hate uh, that shit. I think we get a framed like portrait of you naked, but like you know, very tastefully like holding oh, your goods. You know, interesting. With like, with like foliage. Oh, okay. I don't know berries. why I'm covering one tit. <laughs> I don't. I, uh, the two? Yeah, I'm doing this. Oh well, you know, you're like an angel, and by the you oh. know, you know, in the old painting tit didn't really matter. Like if one kind of like peeped out, it'd be like, it's okay. Right, it's a, you as know, long whatever. as both don't show. Yeah. Exactly. You know. Mm, interesting. It was a different time back then. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what else? What else for the set? I well, we went through lighting. We went through set decoration. We went through table. Okay, everything's got to be able to be stripped down so that we could turn the space into anything else. Well, too. that's the whole point. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Like so everything on wheels. Yeah, er- everything. Every. I don't even know. Like, I don't know. We make we make the ground out of like Teflon. What the fuck? <laughs> or something. I don't know. Like we make the ground like it's not like regular flooring. Yeah. It's like a weird type of like not slippery astroturf. Yeah, like we're at the fucking park. I hate that. Do you? Bro, there's black beads are yeah, everywhere, bro. Oh my god, those fucking It's like suck. yo, Bobby Bobby is the sickest basement, but like you don't go there. Bro. Don't go there. <laughs> don't go there. Make sure to wear fucking cleats. <laughs> oh my god. No, like that's my f- I think that would be like my favorite thing when I'm older. I say we just turn this into like Rob Deerdeck's fantasy factory. Yeah. Put a foam Oh, that's right the best warehouse it, yeah, mm-hmm. for sure. Everything can be customizable. But that's, like, my favorite thing about just, like, in general of, like, growing up. Like, to think of, like, watching Architectural Digest videos and be like, I won't get there, but I'll get close. Like, yeah, I'll, yeah, yeah. I'll have my, I'll have. My I'll version of I'll that. have a nice house that's, like, mine, right? It's, like, you know. and you That's just, designed to my liking. Yeah, you have, just like, you get, like, you know, a house with, like, eight rooms in it and be like, yo. Three of these rooms are gonna be some crazy shit. Yeah, it's gonna you know? be the gym, it's the gym, movie room, etc. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For well, sure. for, yeah, definitely. Joystick room, or like to have like a movie theater type setup, but you don't have the movie theater site type seats. You just have like something mad fluffy, like a, like a nice sofa. Or yeah, something like, like that. many sofas, which is probably cooler than the movie theater seat though. Oh, for sure. Yeah, so you gotta cuddle, you know. Yeah, for sure. Like you and me, for the warmth. No. Yeah. So I think we got it. We got it planned out. We're gonna get some quasar light bars for the top, right? We're gonna get a rounded table that we can put the sides down for. We're gonna get uh, some naked portraits scrolling of text. you with some NFT, some scroll. What the fuck is scrolling text? Like the LED thing in front of the stores? Oh yes. yes. Yeah, we need that. One of those, right? Yeah, yeah, there. yeah. So instead of free jokes, which I didn't even get until what the fuck that even means. Yeah, I don't still know what that <laughs> yeah, means. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I do, but I I don't think we can get. It. Do we have time to get into it? Go for it. Okay, so there was a guy on the train. I don't know where I was going to fit this in. I probably wasn't. I think I was just going to put it up there and it was going to sit there, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or it's also, it's like, that's us, right? We're also free jokes. Free jokes, yeah. yeah. We don't charge you guys. Not yet, at least. You know. Yeah. We will. Get to the fucking train. Okay, so I was on the train, right? Guy was preaching. 
people kind of looked like horrified a little Got bit. It. You know, people weren't looking like a guy was preaching. People were looking like there was like a homeless guy doing some crazy shit. Okay. Which is what like, you know, I thought originally, but then I look over, take out my headphone. And it's just the guy talking about Jesus, you mm-hmm. know, talking God, how we have to, you know, pray. Yeah. Stuff like that. And it's all, all good. Yeah. All good stuff. And then he just does like a complete 180. And he's like, and if you don't, and it just turned into like the most like vicious shit. And that's why people were horrified because uh-huh. because it was like he was just saying like, oh, you'll fucking die Burn in hell. You fucking- oh, oh, like 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 basically like uh, like uh, just like a like a what's it like a crucible, essentially. Yeah. Like you'll be sent through like like the light levels of hell. You'll be raped like crazy shit. And people wow. like horrible stuff. And then he and then and then, you know some brave man decided to like talk back and he was like man don't talk about that shit bro that's fucking crazy right don't say that shit and then he was like you know this is not you know saying a joke this is serious and he's like oh this guy's got free jokes and then the guy just got mad he's like free jokes and it just reminded me of like a bikes scenario bikes yeah like that's what it reminded me of for a free joke yeah 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 he was just like free jokes I'm so who said that true. The, the, so so the basically said that? so so the guy who was basically just talking back to him. He was yeah. like, I wouldn't really call it an arguing. It was like in between High Street and Fulton. Got it. You know, on the A. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And it was there. And uh, the guy was like, oh, this man's joking. Like, this guy's funny. You know, like he was saying it like that. He's got some free, you know, free yeah, yeah, jokes yeah. for the train. And then that that's what he responded with, free jokes. But he never said free jokes. Yeah. He just said, no, you're, you're, you're being a funny guy. Got it, got it. And uh, that's that's New York for you. And that's free jokes. That's free, free jokes. Thanks for thanks for fucking <laughs> for letting me know what that no was. Problem, no problem. Anytime. No fucking idea. It was just sitting there yeah. for fifty minutes. But let's get into the jam and the yam of the week. Okay. Sound good? Yeah, that sounds pretty one good. One is a one is a vegetable and one is a preservative. <laughs> so I guess I'll start. My jam of the week is a fire song that is called uh, "How You Doing." And I that, heard this. That doing is without the G and with the apostrophe. So it's like, how you doing? You know what I mean? Oh, uh, the, the G at the end, not at the front. <laughs> what? <laughs> Gal, you doing? Shout out to How You Doing by Beige Kings. It's British <laughs> boom bap. Yeah, I heard. I mean, it was. Never like, heard that before. I've heard drill and I've heard, you know, other types of British rap, but just chill ass British boom bap. Fucking dope. Huge fan now. It's pretty vibe. I heard it. Yeah, it's, a fi- we, it's a vibe. We yeah. listen to it while setting up. It's so quite vibe. them. They're great. Shout out to the Beige Kings. Yeah. What about you, Dill? Okay. Uh, I probably haven't chosen this before. I was going to choose a lucky song because I'm going to his concert. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to do that. Oh, shit. The, the, the yam of the week is C. The letter. The letter C. The letter C by Sewer Person. Is it capitalized or yes. lowercase? It's capitalized. Also, what kind of human being is Sewer Person? Yeah, exactly, right? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's good. White rapper, but he's he's pretty solid. I found him because he did like uh, emo rap type stuff. Uh huh. But I found out that he often like he makes music like probably like once every like two or three months. Okay. And every time it's with a different producer, and which each with each producer it's like a certain like different style. Oh shit. So like with this one producer, he does a lot of like uh, I don't know, just kind of like not I want to say fast rap, but like more like you know quicker rapping okay. style yeah whereas like and there's another one where it's like pop rap there's another where it's like acoustic you know cool it's good stuff Shout out to see and it's one of those songs where it's like it's too short so you have to listen to it like four times Got it. Yeah, mad annoying kind of like uh, attention by funeral I feel you. definitely thanks for watching the joystick show uh before we leave you i'll leave you with a little bit of my neck not asmr you want some of that dill oh no want to hear what my neck sounds like no yeah, here we go Guys, I hope you like this at home. That's my fucked up neck. <laughs> it gets way worse. Bobby, by the way, and Bobby, if you wondered if Bobby only had a fucked up neck, no, no, no. Uh, he's got a lot more <laughs> fucked up things on his body and person as a whole. My neck, my shoulder. I think I have a pussy in my crack. Right yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Incredible. Uh, thanks for watching the Joystick Show. Go ahead and leave a like if you enjoy what you see. If you remember don't that like comment. It, Right? Can you stop cutting me off when I'm doing this fucking shit, bro? <laughs> this is annoying, man. All right? You know I do this every week. Just let me get through my part. And when I've silence... cut you off the last, like, four weeks. <laughs> yes. Jesus Christ. Anyway, if you like what you see, leave a like. If you don't like what you see, ow. Hurt my fucking feelings. Fuck off. But that's all right. I get it. It's cool. Yeah. We'll do better. 
Uh, make sure to go ahead and subscribe. It helps us a great deal, and it keeps you in track of exactly what we're making. And to it keep really you even does. further in track, you can go ahead and click that bell to stay notified whenever a joystick upload pops up. Uh, That's right. Any final thoughts to leave our viewers with here? Oh, on episode 80, I think I just hurt the fuck out of my foot. I'm not even going to lie. Oh, yeah, because yeah. ankle. Yeah. Yep, I twisted it back. Yep. Ooh. That's not good. Bobby's ankle is also fucking broken. <laughs> yep. As uh, can you give us some ankle ASMR. Are no, you not I'm that definitely not gonna no? do that. You're not for, that flexible. My fucking ankle you can't falls put, off. You can't put that around. You can't do the fucking. Oh no, that's Joey. Joey can do both. I think. Yeah. Mhm. Mm Next week, tune in <laughs> to, to see Joey. <laughs> Joey suck his own. <laughs> he puts his legs behind his back and jumps. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>